We have been doing an ongoing series of videos related to Calm C, just kind of giving you some tips and tricks and strategies and reflecting on different elements of the platform. Today, we're going to specifically be looking at port sales and consider whether this is an option for you to think about either as a seller or as a buyer. Let's get into this. I want to start off with just considering it as a buyer. Is this a good space to consider going in and looking for good deals on a bulk amount of cards? The way we're going to do this today, I have a particular idea in mind and some specific things I want to share, but I also want to just kind of look through with you on a few of the ports that are here um, just to see, you know, if you look at one of these things, how do you determine if it's a good deal or if it's not a good deal? Because it can be really hard to tell. So first thing you're going to want to do is you come to the port sale thing, you're going to want to see how, what do you want to find by? Um, if, if you do ones that are recently posted, how I will usually organize it just because this means there's less eyeballs on these ones. If I do it by ending soonest, which probably means that the most number of people have looked on it and passed on it. So if so many people have already passed on it, probably I'm not going to want it either, most likely. You could do percentage off asking price, percentage off SRP, but you know, a lot of times percentage off asking price means nothing because somebody could put their prices astronomically high and then do a 90% discount and the prices could still be way too high. Uh, sometimes people do that just to kind of trick you. It's one of the things you have to be careful about in ports is a lot of people are trying to trick you into thinking it's a really valuable port when actually it's not. And this is one of the things people will do, give you these huge percentages off. But if you look closely, you'll see actually the cards are still way overpriced. And this percentage off SRP also means absolutely nothing because the SRP doesn't cover most cards. And the SRP that ComC has is way off of anything real. So I don't understand that one. Average SRP also has nothing, no purpose for this one. Most items, I, I mean, I guess, <laughs> I don't know why you'd want to organize by that unless you just wanted to buy a ton. So really, whenever I'm doing this, I usually always go by recently posted so I can see the newer things in there that have less eyeballs on them yet. So when I'm doing, doing this, you can also see... Um, you know, this $1,200 is going to be the number that they are asking. If it has nothing there, I haven't asked for a number, um, which is sometimes kind of annoying because those ones, I, I go into them anyway sometimes, but I, I don't even know where to begin. But let's look at this one. It looks like it's twelve. It's $1,200. Somebody put in just baseball cards. So when you put in a port, um, you know, you can either choose by sport or by year or your entire port. So if it's like this, it's all the all the different sports within their port. Everything they have for sale on the platform is all in this one. In this one, it's just they just decided to put all their Star Wars cards up in the port. So this is one way you can do it when you're when you're selling it. Let's uh, let's go through and look. Let's I, this one has basketball. I, this channel tends to be more basketball than anything else. So let's go ahead and look at this one. Actually, Chicago Card Exchange, twelve hundred and fifty. So you can see when you first get in here, you can see that there's going to be 993 cards. So at first glance, when you consider 993 cards and you look at uh, total SRP, which if the total SRP meant anything, this could look kind of interesting. OK, look, it's half price from the total SRP and there's even 118 cards that aren't there. So that could make it look interesting. But again, because this SRP, you have to be very careful. This SRP can really fool you into thinking something is a good deal when it's really not, because sometimes there's cards that their SL SRP will be $100. But really, if you look at their comps, it could be a $10 card. And it still says that here. So you have to be very careful with that. I think a lot of times people will also sell ports when they know that they have a lot of cards that have a high SRP that actually aren't worth that much. So they will sell a, por a port as a way to try to kind of trick people into thinking it's valuable. So you got to be careful about that. And like I was saying before, with the original price, this also doesn't necessarily mean anything because they could have upped all their prices um, and then given a, a discount or, or there's all sorts of things they, they could have done. They could have decided that, oh, because this this number is, is that high. I'm going to raise my prices so it looks a little bit higher, but it's still a little less than SRPO. Oh, people are getting a good deal. So there's all kinds of little tricks that people could do. Um, and a lot of people do them, it seems to me. So you really have to be careful when you come in here because in my experience with ports, the majority of them are people trying to find unaware people. Um, you know, there are there are port buyers who are more aware and 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 are aiming and, and offering certain prices and, you know, are, are able to do this more successfully. But I think a lot of people who buy ports are probably doing it and not realizing that they're getting a really bad deal. Now, a couple of other things to keep in mind with port sales, you can offer 20 percent of the total asking price. 
which is uh, the total asking price, or 10% uh, of the total SRP. So you could put in a number, you know, like uh, $256. You could make that offer. 20% uh, of the asking price or 20% of that, you could put in that number. And I think a lot of people do that. I've heard from people who sell ports more regularly that sometimes they get extremely low ball offers right off the bat from a bunch of people. I think there's a, a handful of people who buy up more ports and their strategy basically is going to a port that, you know, that they wouldn't mind having and just low ball it like crazy. And every once in a while, maybe somebody will accept that really low ball offer. It probably doesn't happen that often. It's probably something you'd have to go in and, and do this pretty regularly. So now let's consider. So if, if all those numbers really don't mean much of anything, how do you determine if this is going to be a good deal or what kind of price you would want to offer for this? So one of the first things that you could do, so the, the cards that are here, the, the however many 12 cards here that are displayed, usually by default, it's the 12 most valuable, the, the cards that they're selling for the highest price. That's the default setting. The When you're setting up a port, you can set it up to choose whatever cards you want to. The default setting is the most valuable cards or the most expensive cards you're currently selling. So what I'll usually do is I'll look at these first and just get a sense of the pricing. You know, is, is it a reasonable price they have, you know, on, on the cards here? Because that's kind of the first thing you can do. I mean, people can trick with this too. They could do 12 cards that are really good deals and they put it up on here and those 12 cards look like good deals but then when you go into the port further you can see that those are the only 12 cards that are good deals um, so you kind of have to do your homework on that you got to look at certain cards and, and see you know I, I can already tell you know this particular Zeke Naji uh, contenders draft pick uh, auto, I, I would not want to pay that much for it, anywhere close to that much for it but you know 1275 for a card out of 2500 that's just a base card that's probably a $1 card, to be honest, maybe $1.50. Looking through this, don't think I would ever consider offering. But if I wanted to, you can click on this and get further information. This is only basketball. You can see that there's from all the different decades. So one of the things I'll often do when I go into here is I will look by the lowest because I want to see how many junky commons there are. And you can see all of these here that they're listed at 35 cents. And as I'm going through and looking at all of these, this is okay. These are all like base common stuff I don't want at all that I probably would never be able to sell that would sit on my platform forever. The entire first page is garbage. If I go to the third page halfway through, it's still cards that are really not worth much of anything. I'm all the way up to the third page. Three pages of cards under a dollar out of seven pages. So half of the cards basically are like, you know, under a dollar twenty-five. If I get all the way up to page six, I can still see this is cheap cards, not that interesting. Nothing here that would really do that well for me. I mean, that's a cool card, but still it's only two, it's two. I'd maybe buy that one individually by itself. I could see a scenario where I'd do that, but no, none of these cards are very interesting. So this is this is one. This is one that's a terrible, terrible deal. As I as I look through the options, these right here are the most valuable. The cards are selling for the highest price on their entire port. And these are still not very interesting at all. I can't find a single interesting card that I would be able to really sell. This is a terrible batch of cards. So this is this is a really good one to look at, actually. Because uh, when you get up here, maybe there's one or two that are pretty good. But then if you remember, they're asking $1,250 for this list of cards, which is absolutely insane. This this is 699 different cards. There was actually a thousand and something cards. It's because there's doubles and triples and quadruples of certain cards, which is why those numbers look different. Um, but there's really, like, that's a cool card. I like that one. That one's all right. Uh, but that's really about it. Those two cards are the only ones that I kind of like. And for $1,250, this is objectively an extremely terrible deal. <laughs> all these numbers make it seem like this could be a really good deal. But I don't know how that SRP could be at that number with this particular grouping of cards. Even though this comes out to just a little bit over a dollar per card, most of those cards are you're not going to be able to sell for even 25 cents. So paying, paying more than a dollar for them each, you're going to lose money on this almost for certain. Uh, and that's what I find almost all of these are like. In fact, it's so much like that, that I 
barely ever even look to find ports for sale because I find that it's just impossible to find. I, I know some people do this more regularly. If I had a bankroll, if I had bankrolled myself in here that I hadn't touched, or I hadn't gotten money back or hadn't been flipping cards or, or buying other cards to send back to myself and I had thousands of dollars, maybe I would I would look a little bit more frequently uh, and see what I could see. But but generally, I find that it's it's just garbagey deals. Um, let's see. Let's see what else. Let's do another one just to, to have a second look at a Let's do one that's cheaper because um, that's usually the ones I will go in and look at are these really cheap ones just because maybe it's somebody who doesn't have that much on the platform and want to get rid of all their cards and be finished. So that's sometimes I'm thinking that that might be, you know, somebody who's not really into sports cards that much and they're just selling all their cards that are left. So this is their, their all the different sports they have. This is their entire port uh, of only 62 cards. So I'm paying about a dollar per card here. Again, if you look at these numbers, you would think, oh, this must be a pretty good deal. There's only 22 of the cards that actually have an SRP, and that SRP is already more than double this number. And, uh, and then there's another 40 that don't even have an SRP. So, you know, if you just look at that, you can say, okay, okay, this is, this is worth considering. And sometimes that is worth considering at least to begin to look. But once you start looking, you can see, okay, let's see what we see this time. I'm just assuming it's going to be bad deals. Jim Brown, but it's 2001. There's nothing here. <laughs> 10k trolls okay there's nothing here this isn't even really worth looking at so i would just skip over that one pretty quickly okay here's a forty five hundred dollars for basketball sometimes baseball might be the one you're looking at i'm just for this video i'm looking at basketball specifically because i can realize it a bit faster without having to look things up uh this one has a thousand cards so you're going to be paying on average about four dollars per card um you know these numbers again they can big, a little scary. But if these right here, right off the bat, I can say, if I'm going to spend $4,500, I'm going to want some excellent cards. I need at least a handful of cards that are going to be phenomenal. And I'm looking at these 12 cards they have listed here that are supposed to be the 12 highlights. And these are not phenomenal cards. I mean, these are Nene and Jacob Evans and Mo Bamba and, and, a, and a redeemed miles turner card that i don't know if you can ever get that back i i mean these are not good cards and these are the ones that are the highlight of a 4500 five hundred dollar purchase that's ab objectively insane and you go in and again or, or under, looking at the um, lowest price base commons that are not worth much let's go up to page three and see how much we're at then still under a dollar cards that are really not worth much Okay, we're all the way up to page five now. Let's we're still just at two dollars, and even these cards look like stuff I'd put in a dollar box. These are nothing, nothing special. So this is the second highest anything on here. Bowman University cards that are you know good players, but not special cards. Very overpriced. It's terrible stuff. That's a cool card. I would like that for my for my PC, but I'm not going to spend twelve dollars and fifty nine cents on it. So there's there's not much. There's really, I mean, some of these cards are all right, but eighteen dollars for like what a third year Steph Curry base card? <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, so not not much really. This is this is not much better than the other one. Yeah, I know you could probably find that card cheaper. I've, I've kind of looked at that one before. So these are objectively bad deals all over the place. <laughs> Those ones are some of the most expensive ones. I don't know if you could even get them. Uh, so, you know, you can see, and then for this batch of cards that you'd have trouble reselling much of any of them, they're asking $4,400 for it. You can see, <laughs> you really have to be careful. This is why I don't look at ports very often. I find it's more frustrating than enjoyable. Um, if it doesn't have a price tag on it, that's why I opened this one. You just have to look at these numbers and offer and offer a number. I'm having trouble seeing why these 12 cards are the ones here. It wasn't by default because these 48 cents cards wouldn't be there uh, above these ones which are 225 because that's not how they default it um but if, if I'm, I'm guessing this is really base stuff there's a lot of 90s the junk wax yeah wow yeah a lot of junk wax stuff they're just trying to offload i'm up on page seven of eight and i'm still under a dollar here and it's i'm only seeing 1990s cards the most valuable card is a dollar 85 that one's kind of cool by itself that's the only cool one i really saw if you're really diligent you could go through and you could probably find uh one here and there and i think some people do that there are people who will go through and do just these low ball offers on the on the ones that actually look good if you ever wanted to consider doing a port sale yourself you would do it in the 
manager and you do a port sale. There's different ways you can see. You can either do your entire port. So I have 2460 cards for sale. So it's not the cards you don't have for sale uh, are not in there. A, if you want to do like a like kind of a lot sale instead of a port sale, you'd have to basically um, take a bunch of your cards off the market. Just say that you're not they're not for sale, and then the ones that you did want to put in a port would be the ones for sale, and then you put those up as you know people can buy the entire port. That's a lot of work if you have a lot of cards. So I do wish that eBay could, I mean that ComC could set this up as a sort of lot sale. So if I wanted to sell you know a bunch like 20 Kobe Bryant cards, or I wanted to sell 100 cards from one set or whatever, I could put them in a lot instead of having to do an entire port. But you can narrow it down a little bit. You can narrow it down by year. You can narrow it down by uh, by sport. So if I just you know want to get rid of all of my soccer cards at once or all of my MMA cards at once, I could do that. Keep in mind you're doing you're paying five dollars to set up the port sale, so you're not going to want to do it for something that you're going to sell for twenty bucks or something because then you're giving too high of a percentage. But you can narrow it down, uh, and then you can see, oh, and then you have to have it less than two thousand items is the other thing. Okay, but then once you see, you can see here that you know this total SRP for the all the cards I have on sale is this. The total asking price is this. Now, I know because this is my port that that's a pretty like fair number right there. But I also know that if I was to put this up, uh, I would I would get offers of, of the minimum, you know, 16,000. I, I, I mean, I, I know that's a fair price generally because um, I don't overprice cards too much. I mean, there's some cards in there that I know are overpriced. This one that just flipped there, I know this is overpriced now just because I figure that it's got to go up in value again. It's gone down so much, and it's a really cool LeBron James rookie. It's a gem mint, so I'm kind of holding on to that one a little bit, hoping it goes up. But most of my cards are very fairly priced. Uh, and But I, I know that I would be getting offers of like you know 10% of this or whatever, 20%, whatever the minimum was. Those are the kinds of offers I would get. So I think the only time you're really going to want to put a port up for sale, in my opinion, is if you're really just wanting to get off the platform. Like if you're done with ComC for some reason, uh, then I would go ahead and do that. If you're actually thinking of it as a way to make money, I, I think it's much better to just let your cards sit, reprice them if you're if they're not selling, so they're a little bit lower, or or you know do a, a sale. You know if you if you find your cards not selling, do a ten percent off sale, fifteen percent off sale, twenty percent off sale, something like that. I think that's a, a better way to to make money than to sell a port because you're just going to get low ball offers. Uh, that that's really I mean maybe every once in a while there's someone who comes along who doesn't know what they're doing and they and they they spend too much on a port uh, but there's so many ports that are trying to catch people like that that they're not gonna like accidentally buy your port very unlikely and then you're not gonna want to you know <laughs> prepare yourself or, or set yourself up to just be expecting a fool to come along and stumble all over and make a mistake on your port so you know really you you're only gonna be setting up a port sale if your expectation is that you're gonna be selling it for 20%, 30% of what you're what, what you're asking. You know, that's really people are trying to get bulk deals here so that they can resell. This is really set up for larger scale flippers. So I would only consider doing a port if you're just done. You know, if you want to get off the platform completely and you don't want to deal with your cards anymore, sell them all at once and be done with it. Otherwise, I would highly suggest not doing it. So um, anyway, that's enough for this video. It was getting kind of long, so I hope you have enjoyed this. Um, I've only bought one port in my life. It was a $60 port that I bought that had some cool cards on it. I made it about a while back. Um, it was it had some like you know really cheap 1890s stuff from 19th century, literally 120 years, 130 years ago, uh, and and a few other cards that were just kind of interesting um, from really old time. And it was only $60. There's like uh, Arm and Hammer bird cards from the 1930s, and there was all these things that were just like fascinating that I just wanted to look at, and it was 60 bucks for like you know 200 or 300 cards that were all kind of fascinating. So I I went ahead and did it, and that's the only time I have ever bought a port. I used to go in more frequently, you know, like now I've I've mentioned before that I'll go in and I'll I'll look at recently added whenever I first come into um, to con to see you know if there's any really good deals that have just been posted. It used to be the case that I would all sales as well and and just do it by the recently there and see if there was any good deals but the more i did that the more i got frustrated at how it seemed like most people were just trying to cheat people and so really i just kind of stopped leaving uh, but if you do want to to look into it or something i hope this video was helpful for you i'll catch you in the next one peace